For this lesson, we'll be going over the transient analysis for RC circuits. Now, what is the transient analysis? It's a circuit when switched from one condition to another, creating a transient period during the elements change from their former state to the new state. To perform the transient analysis, we must understand how a capacitor works in a DC circuit. When a capacitor is uncharged, it acts as a short. Most circuit analysis, it'll say initial condition. This is not always true. However, it's a safe assumption if not stated. When a capacitor is fully charged or a steady state, the capacitor acts as an open. So this is something to remember when performing your circuit analysis. Also, a capacitor requires five time constants to become a steady state condition. Five time constants is RC times five. And we'll address more of that as the examples go on. To become proficient in transient analysis with RC circuits, we must understand at least four fundamental formulas in performing the circuit analysis. These four here are the most common ones to become accustomed to, as well as you can find these same formulas in the FE review manual. To perform the transient analysis, we're going to go over four transient response steps. First, we're going to find the ideal Thevenin model. That's the model you see to the right, which has one voltage source, one resistor, one capacitor. Then we're going to find the steady state conditions. Again, that's after five time constants. We're going to find the initial conditions, what the capacitor is at the time zero or initial condition. And then we're going to plug and chug using those formulas found in the previous slide. All right, for this problem, we're going to start off with a relatively easy one. So for starters, we're going to look at step one, which is find the ideal Thevenin model, which is one source, one resistor, and one capacitor. Now this one already has one voltage source, one resistor, and one capacitor. So step one is already complete. Step two, find the steady state conditions. All right, steady state conditions. Steady state means when it's actually been on for a very long time or at more than five time constants. So when the capacitor is fully charged, it acts as an open, which means that there is actually 10 volts at the steady state condition for the capacitor, which means the C, and this is going to be infinite because it's steady state condition, it's going to equal 10 volts. And the reason being is, since it acts as an open, there's no current flowing through the circuit, or it acting as a current not flowing through the circuit, which means the 10 volt power supply is actually going between points A and B. All right, so steady state condition is 10 volts at the capacitor. All right. Step three, find the initial conditions. Now for this, the initial conditions, you can assume the capacitor is uncharged. So since it's uncharged, it acts as a short, which means there is zero volts going through the capacitor. So for VC, See if I can actually make this look halfway decent. At time zero, it's going to give us zero volts. There we go. Okay? So right now we already found our steady state condition and our initial condition. And again, this is going to be a very simple problem because we're going to start simple and then we'll get to the harder ones. All right, for step two, we need to find VC after two time constants. Well, all right, so it's two time constants. Two time constants for a RC circuit is going to be RC. So for this one, we're going to have 10K. Again, since we have the Thevenin theorem, it's whatever this resistor is. And C is whatever this capacitor is. So it's going to be times 1 microfarad. And once we plug this in our calculator, it's going to be 10K times 1 microfarad. It's going to come out to be a time constant of 0 0.01 seconds. That's pretty simple. So in a steady state condition, it would be 5 times 0 0.01 seconds. So 0 0.05 seconds would be the steady state condition. So if you're wondering what steady state for that one is, it would be 0 0.05. And let's see if we can do a little less. There we go. All right. So two time constants will be two times 
0 0.01, so 0 0.02 would be two time constants. So let's go ahead and plug and chug this in our equation over here to the right. So we're going to use this equation right here because we want to find VC. So it's going to be VC at a time of 0 0.02 equals, and then steady state conditions going to be 10 volts. So it's going to be 10 volts plus initial condition, which is 0 volts minus 10 volts again, since it's a steady state condition. Close bracket. And then it's going to be E to the negative. And again, two time constants. So it's going to be 0 0.02 over RC, which is going to be 0 0.01. So plugging that in our calculator. So once we plug and chug that in our calculator, it's actually going to look something similar to that. And we're going to bring this down 10 volts plus 10 volts, and that's VC. So let's go ahead and find negative 10 e to the negative 2. So e to the negative 2 comes out to be negative 1.3533. My handwriting is not the best today. And then plus the 10 volts. And giving us a final answer of 8.646 volts. So it's not fully charged after two con time constants, but it's approximately 8.64 volts after that amount of time. So this was a relatively easy problem, and we'll actually step it up to the next problem where we're at and give you a more likely scenario of what you might see on the test. All right, this problem's a little bit more difficult, so let's see if we can solve it under six minutes. All right. Going back to our rules, step one, find the ideal Thevenin model. Now this one does not have one source, one resistor, but it does have one capacitor. So looking at one of our earlier videos, the Thevenin theorem of how to actually find the Thevenin model, we're going to use those same steps to obtain an actual ideal model over here. So the first thing we'll do is try to find our Thevenin. We're going to go ahead and take this source and we're going to short it. So we're going to actually put a short between those two points, which means the actual source is not there. All right, so trying to find R Thevenin from points A and B, we can see that 60 ohms and 40 ohms are in parallel, and then the 16 ohms are in series. We can do 40 ohms plus 60 ohms, and again, this is one over and then one over both of those. This is going to give us a total of 24 ohms and then 24 ohms plus 16 since it's in series comes out to a grand total of 40 ohms. Okay, so our Thevenin for this model is going to be and I promise to work on my handwriting as these videos go on it's going to be 40 ohms. So now we need to find the voltage source. So let's go ahead and put our original model back. Now the way we can find the voltage at points A and B is actually look at wherever the voltage is between points between the 6 ohm resistor. Again, this is just the same way we did Thevenin uh, theorem in the other video. We can actually use the voltage divider rule for this one. So this one's going to be 60 ohms over 40 ohms plus 60 and that's going to be times 300 and that's going to come out to a grand total of 180 volts so the voltage here is going to be the same the voltage over here there's no current flowing through the 16 ohm resistance because just like we find our Thevenin model you have to act like points A and B are open so since there's no current flowing you can negate the 16 ohm resistor for the point of finding the, the voltage. So the V Thevenin comes out to be 180 volts. Again, I apologize for the handwriting. So we're going to have a model that looks similar to this one right here. And this is going to be our ideal Thevenin model. So step one complete. All right, step two, find our steady state conditions. 
just like the previous problem. We're going to voltage at the capacitor at infinite time, which is after five time constants, and then at the initial time. So if you look at the original circuit, you can see the switch is closing right at time zero. So the steady state time frame would mean this capacitor is fully energized or fully charged. Since the capacitor is going to be fully charged, you can use the V-thevenin to actually determine your VC for this particular model. So VC at infinite time is going to be 180 volts. And same thing as last time, when it's initially charged or the switch is automatically closed or initially closed, there is zero volts between points A and B. Since there's zero volts, VC at this is time zero is zero. So trying to find the time constants. So we're going to actually have T or a time constant of 40 ohms times 2.5 millifarads. And that is going to come out to be 0.1 seconds. So we found our steady state condition. We found our initial condition. So we want to find VC. Now we found it at infinite time and initial time. So we already found VC at both those times. So if you plug and chug it into our actual equation here, it's going to come out to be VC at time. Again, we're just coming up with the final equation. We're not actually putting a time in there yet. It's going to be infinite time of 180 plus and initial was zero volts because it was not charged. Infinite time again, 180. That's T over 0.1. So simplifying the equation here. Again, I greatly apologize about my handwriting today. It's going to be 180 volts minus 180 volts and then E, T over 0.1. That's a negative T, if you can see that. And this could be brought down to look something similar as such. Because the reciprocal of 0.1 is 10. So E, negative 10, T. So this would be your final answer. This problem is going to be a fun one. The switch has been closed for a very long time. We can assume the 25 microfarad capacitor has actually been fully charged. At time zero, the switch opens and takes two milliseconds for the 25 microfarad capacitor to reach 20 volts, whatever your resistor value. For this one, we're going to follow the same steps. However, we're going to plug and chug in a different way. All right, for this one, it's already in a Thevenin model. We have one voltage source, one resistor, one capacitor. So step one's already complete. Step two, find the steady state condition. Since we know the 25 microfarad capacitor has been fully charged, we know the initial condition of the capacitor is going to be, and this is at time zero, it's going to be 50 volts. This is going to be a discharge circuit. This is not a charging one. So the initial condition is actually going to be 50 volts. already been fully charged. All right, steady state condition. This is going to be VC, and over an infinite amount of time, it's going to be zero volts because after enough time, the capacitor is going to actually discharge completely. However, we need to find a resistor value after two milliseconds. All right, so let's actually plug and chug what we know. Yeah, check these off along the way. Same equation. VC is actually going to be 20 volts. That's going to be at a time of two milliseconds. And we know what infinite time is, zero plus 50 volts minus 0 volts. Again, same equation. Initial voltage is 50 over an infinite amount of time, 0. All right, now here's where it gets fun. So it's time of 2 milliseconds over RC. And we're going to bring this over here a little bit. So we know we have 20 volts over here equals 50 volts, E, negative 2 milliseconds over 
R, and then we already know what C is, which is 25 microfarad. So I know the first thing we can do is actually get rid of the 50 volts. We can actually divide both sides by 50 volts. And that'll actually give us a value of 0 0.4. And obviously we have one right here. E negative 2 milliseconds over R 25 micro. All right, and I think we can simplify this down a little bit more. So let's move that guy right up here. So 0 0.4 equals 1 E negative. Now we can actually do the 2 milliseconds over 25 microfarads. So we're going to plug and chug that in our calculator. And that will give us a negative 80 over R. All right, so simplify it down again. Now to get rid of the E there, we're going to have to use log. So let's go ahead and do log of 0.4. And if you log this side, and obviously those two will cancel out. And log of 0.4 comes out to be negative point. 916. That's going to be negative 80 over R. Again, all we got rid of was the E by using log. All right. So doing basic algebra, R would equal negative 80 over negative 0.916. Which comes out to be a final answer of 87.30 ohms. Now I know this was tedious, but once you actually get a rhythm down, it'll actually go a little quicker. So our final answer for this one is a resistance value equals 87.3 ohms.